Hello everybody, how are you? Uh, today, inshallah, we're going to uh, continue our lesson about changes of state and at the end of the lesson, we're going to uh, answer some questions from the lesson uh, review. So, if you remember that so far we have learned about what about the changes of state of matter and we have discussed about the changes of state from solid to liquid and we say that when matter changes state from solid to liquid the process is called melting while the opposite uh, process when the state changes from liquid to solid we call it freezing and then we moved and discussed about what and discussed about the change state of matter from liquid to gas and we say that uh, the process is called uh, evaporation while the opposite process of evaporation is what? Yes, yeah. it's condensation. So condensation is when uh, the state of matter changes from gas into into liquid. Okay, so today inshallah we'll see how do solids and gases change the state. So the students under the right conditions some solids and gases can change the state without ever becoming a liquid so the solid will directly change to gas without what without uh, becoming a liquid. The change from solid state directly into a gas is called what? Sublimation. So sublimation is the change of state of matter from a solid directly into a gas without becoming a liquid. Okay. What about guys the opposite uh, process of sublimation? The opposite process of sublimation is called deposition. So deposition is the change in state from a gas directly to a solid again without becoming a liquid. So guys, uh, if you remember that we say that uh, when matter changes from one state to another, the physical state uh, changes but its chemical identity doesn't. So uh, today, inshallah, here where we just we need to summarize what happens exactly to matter when a change of state occurs. Okay, so number one, as we say, the physical state changes, but its chemical identity doesn't. So the chemical identity of the water will not change when it when the state of this water change from uh, solid, for example, to liquid or from liquid to gas. Okay. Number two, during a change of state, the energy of the particles, their movement and the distance between them change. So we say that uh, during the change of state, we should either uh, gain the particles should gain or should lose. A certain amount of energy and then because of this uh, energy the added energy or the lost energy the movement of the particles of the state will change they either will move more freely or they will become fixed to their position and number three the distance between the particles inside this matter will change and we say for example if certain particles gain a certain amount of energy the distance between the particles will increase while if these particle uh, when if these particles lose uh, energy the distances between the particles will decrease so again during the change of state they will be changed and the amount of energy that will be absorbed by these particles the movement of these particles will uh, differ and the distance between the particles of this matter will, ch will change either it will decrease or it will what it will uh, increase according to the amount of energy that has been uh, lost or gained okay so number four guys the mass of a substance doesn't change when a state changes to so the mass uh, of the, for example, of three ice cubes is equal to the mass of this uh, of the liquid water that will <laughs> result from the melting of these cubes, or the mass of uh, solid uh, butter is equal to the mass of a liquid butter after the solid butter uh, got melted, and so on. So the mass of substance 
doesn't change when it state changes okay so only as we said only the energy of the particles their movement and the distance between partic particles will change but their chemical identity will not change and the mass of substance will not change okay so each state contains the same amount of matter the amount of matter in three for example uh, I think is equal to the mass uh, of the liquid water that will form after these three ice cubes melt. So now let us guys summarize all the process that we have learned in this lesson. Again guys we have evaporation and condensation, we have melting and we have freezing. What else guys? We have sublimation and deposition. So guys I label the state changes that are taking place in both the reactions of the atoms at stage A, B, and C. Draw the messing model for the gas state. Here we need to draw the model for the gas state. Okay, so for A, guys, we have uh, two directions. Suppose the change of state is going from liquid to solid. What is the name of this? Uh, process guys from liquid to solid is freezing okay right then let us try to try to answer right here so uh, from liquid to solid as we say freezing then Set is from from what from solid to liquid it will be melting okay all right now for me guys from uh, okay from solid to gas what we said without becoming liquid from solid to gas what is the name of this process guys well, is is a process called sublimation, as we say. Okay, so sublimation would be right here. Okay. What about the opposite process, guys? From gas to solid. From gas to solid is called what? Yes, it's called deposition. Okay, so right here we have deposition. Okay. What else guys do we have? Well, from liquid to gas is called what? Evaporation. Okay, so right here we have evaporation. Okay, let's move it down a little bit. Evaporation. And up here we have what? The change of state from gas to liquid would be what? Yes, condensation. So, again guys, from liquid to solid, we call it what? Freezing, while the process that we convert salt to uh, liquid is called melting. For the sublimation and deposition, sublimation is when the state of matter changes from what? Uh, from solid to gas without becoming liquid, while uh, when the state of matter changes from gas to solid without becoming liquid, it's called what? Deposition. And finally here, when the state of matter changes from liquid to gas, we call it evaporation. Why the opposite a process uh, is called condensation and, and is the change of state of matter from gas to liquid. Okay, now here we need guys to draw the more 
model of what we need to draw the model of the gas state so it will be this way guys what do you think yes exactly so the distances between the particles will increase so here we need to add the same number of particles six for example it will be this way guys okay so we need six particles between the particles and the gas state are so big okay this way so guys okay so now let us guys move to the next slide and the question number one to four from the lesson review in your book I guess it's page uh, 87 okay so draw a line to connect the following terms to their definitions freezing evaporation sublimation and melting so freezing what do we mean by freezing freezing guys is the change of what change of state from uh, liquid to solid right then yes number one will be with the letter D change of state from liquid to solid okay so guys what about number two evaporation evaporation as we know is when the change of state of matter change or when the state of matter changes from yes from liquid to gas so number two will be with B so the answer for question number two is B number three Sublimation. What is the meaning of sublimation? Process sublimation is the, the change of state from what? From solid to gas without uh, becoming what? Without becoming liquid. So number three will be with little letter C. And finally we have number four. Melting. Melting is change of state from solid to liquid. So number four, the letter A. So guys, here you have the answers. Okay. And now let us move to the next question. Question number five. What happens to particles when a substance gains energy and changes state? So guys, what we said about uh, the changes that will happen to the particles for any a matter why this matter is changing a state guys when we add energy or here specifically and uh, these particles are gain energy the particles will gain energy and this energy will what will increase uh, the movement of the, the particles inside this matter so they gain when once they gain energy these particles will gain a freedom of motion so they will become more active and they will start to move uh, everywhere and in uh, any direction okay so now guys what happens to the energy that is lost when water freezes so when water freezes here the particles uh, will lose energy so the energy the that these particles will lose will what will uh, be added to the environment okay so guys here is the answer uh, the energy is lost to the environment okay so uh, what about question number seven how does the movement of particles in a stick of butter differ 
from the movement of particles in a dish of melted butter. So, guys, as we know, the stick of butter is solid, and in solid, the particles are uh, close together and they are attached uh, closely to each other. The particles here are fixed in their places, but still they can move and their movement uh, called what? Called vibration, okay? So what about guys, uh, uh, when the butter is uh, melted? The melted butter is liquid, as you know, and uh, once the matter changes from solid to liquid, here these particles will gain energy, the energy will be absorbed by the particles, so here the bonds between particles will break, uh, which will uh, cause the particles to move freely, so there will be uh, small distances between these particles, and this uh, will result in what? And more freedom or uh, for motion for these particles okay so guys the answer will be the stick of butter is solid and the particles are fixed in place but they what they vibrate so the movement of uh, uh, the particles in the solid butter is called vibration while melted butter as we know is liquid some of the attractions between butter particles are broken because of the of the absorbed energy and the particles can move around here as we say the particles will become more freely to move okay last question guys as water is cooled at what temperature do its particles become fixed in place okay so guys when you cool uh, water you are actually changing the state uh, from liquid to what to salt so here we have the freezing process so as we know and uh, now uh, you are what these particles actually are losing energy because the particles are losing energy they will what the motion will decrease and the distances between the particles will decrease and they will uh, start to come close to each other and they will be fixed at the end they will be fixed in their places and all these will happen when at the freezing point of water which is zero degree celsius so guys the answer particles stop moving freely and become fixed in place when water is at uh, zero degree celsius which is what which is the freezing point of water so guys here we try to answer most of the questions in your lesson uh, review. For uh, the other question, you have question number uh, 9 and 10. Please, you can uh, try answer to try answer them for yourself. Okay. Uh, and that's it for today. Thank you guys and have a good weekend and see you inshallah next week.